Here's the major differences between JPEG lossless, JPEG XL lossless, and JPEG XL lossy. Just a quick disclaimer, I've done a ton of research into this whole JPEG lossless new format thing for the iPhone 16 Pro, and I want it to be as accurate as possible, so if it looks like I'm looking off to the side and it seems like I'm reading, it's because I am. I have a lot of stuff written down for this. First off, as far as I'm aware, these formats are only available in and specifically utilized when taking photos with Pro Raw on the iPhone 16 Pro and presumably any new phones that come out after that. So just for clarity, you should know that this video has nothing to do with HEIF or HEIF Max. Now the first one should be pretty obvious, JPEG lossless. It's generally just a super compatible file type. It's basically editable anywhere and can be uploaded anywhere without problem of displaying the image. And you don't have to worry about wherever the photo is going to be supported or not because it will generally be supported. To differentiate easier, a good way to think about it is that JPEG lossless is basically like the old version of this new JPEG XL. So you've got JPEG XL lossless and lossy on the new iPhone 16 Pro as options. JPEG lossless is just the old version of that, basically. So JPEG lossless doesn't have any advanced features like HDR compatibility. It's more limited in how much color it can capture, and it can't be compressed nearly as well as the new version, which means bigger file sizes. So the use case for this file format is very slim in my opinion. If you need a photo to be preserved exactly how it was taken, but for some reason you want the file size to be really big and hardly compressed, this is for you. To be honest, I don't think it's for anyone. I think if you need an actual raw photo taken, preserve it with one of the two other options which I'll get into now. Of the two new ones, we'll start with JPEG XL lossless. This is a form of compressed photo that is like the first one we talked about, except better in literally every way. This one can save HDR information, keep an image intact down to the pixel, and is able to be much more compressed and save much more hard drive space. And it's mostly compatible these days for sharing. Mostly. But let's be honest though, if you're taking photos in this file format, you're probably not taking them to just straight up share them out of the box. You're probably intending to edit them, and then you might turn them into another format for sharing. But the point is, even if you don't plan to edit or convert them, you can still share them if you wanted to. But the two caveats are, it's quite a big file size still, even though it's a lot less than the first option we talked about, it's still big. And the other caveat is not everywhere supports them. It's still a relatively new format and not everyone is implementing them just yet. I don't have a list for who is and isn't implementing the use of JPEG XL, but I can tell you that Instagram does support it. And if that information helps you, you're welcome. Finally, the other new format which is similar to JPEG XL lossless, is JPEG XL lossy. Basically, it's the same thing as JPEG XL lossless, except for one fatal flaw. When you take a photo with this format, it bins or basically destroys some of the pixels of the photo during compression, and whatever it deems worthless is being deleted to create an even higher compressed image which means a smaller file size. So this one still saves a lot of information in the photo and is still very high quality, but when taking these, it can result in artifacts being created when those pixels are destroyed. So to be very clear, here's the major distinctions, if you will. JPEG lossy is high quality at a low to medium storage cost. JPEG XL lossless is perfect quality perfect quality for medium to high storage cost. And both are higher quality than the very first one, which is JPEG lossless. Lossless is just generally better for editing. Lossy is better for sharing. So lossless is better for editing and post because it retains a higher quality image during compression. Lossy compresses even more and makes the image smaller, still keeps a lot of detail and is or would be more suited for sharing online. Oh, and one more thing I'll mention, and this is from 9to5Mac's website, which I never really visit to be honest, but they posted the file types and sizes associated with these formats 
So I'll just report those to you and the credit for that is, you know, 9to5Mac. Just a quick note that lossy and lossless can both be used in either the 12 megapixel or the 48 megapixel camera mode. Here's the rough file sizes when saving in each format. To start off, we have 11 megabytes for JPEG XL lossy Pro Raw at 12 megapixels. 18 megabytes for JPEG XL lossless Pro Raw at 12 megapixels. Then we move up to the 48 megapixel zone. 20 megabytes for JPEG XL lossy Pro Raw at 48 megapixels. And then 46 megabytes for JPEG XL lossless Pro Raw at 48 megapixels. Bye for now. And one more thing, I just want to basically directly compare the difference in size. And you'll notice I said 46 megabytes for JPEG XL lossless Pro Raw 48 megapixels. That is the highest that they have. 46, it compresses all the way down. And if you remember before, and it's probably JPEG lossless that Pro Raw was probably taking before, it was up to 75 megabytes each photo. So this is an extremely higher rate of compression and much more useful when trying to store them in your phone. Anyway, bye.